South Park has friendly faces, but hidden within many of them are crimes that range from petty to heinous. And today, they must answer for those crimes. Who's getting off easy, and who's getting the harshest sentence? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and today we're sentencing South Park characters for their crimes. Before we begin, we'll be tackling this similar to how we did with our King of the Hill sentencing video. Because South Park is a long-running series, we will not be going through every single one of these characters as crimes. Instead, we'll look at one notable series of crimes in one episode or arc committed by each character. The charges given will be in accordance with the laws of wherever the crime is committed, on a case-by-case -case basis. Since the show takes place in Colorado, that's where the reference points will be, unless we say otherwise. We'll also determine whether or not to go easy on the kids or charge them as adults. With that out of the way, the Wicked Binge Court is now in session. Let's start on a high note by bringing Eric Cartman to the stand. We'll be looking at the episode Scott Tinnerman Must Die. I think we all know what happens. Cartman pulls a super elaborate scheme after Scott Tinnerman scams him out of $16.12 and humiliates him in public. The scheme involves tricking Scott into thinking that Mr. Dinkins' pony was abandoned along with his ranch. However, his parents go to the ranch to check on it, and they're shot to death by Dinkins, who was protecting his property. This is already one count of murder by proxy. Cartman will then be charged with one count of tampering with physical evidence, after he takes the body bags away while Dinkins was giving his report to Officer Barb Brady. Finally, he makes Scott's parents into chili and feeds them to him, which is enforced cannibalism. We won't be charging Cartman with this, as there aren't any laws against it in the United States. <laughs> I know, shocking. As the proxy murder was premeditated, we're treating this as first-degree murder. In conclusion, Cartman will certainly get charged as an adult, and he will get life in prison for the murder of Scott's parents and a $100,000 fine for tampering with evidence. Next, we have Kyle Bruflovsky. In the episode The Entity, Kyle's cousin, Kyle, comes into town, and getting sick of him, Kyle tries to get rid of him in a couple of ways. He first has him get on a sled, which he ties to the back of a bus headed for Connecticut, which is one count of child abandonment and endangerment each. He then commits trespassing by going into the airport security bypass and falls imprisonment when he seals his cousin into a box and puts it on a plane headed for Antarctica. Kyle's cousin lives as he comes back a few seasons later, and because of that, we'll go easy on him. We decided that Kyle will receive three years in juvie. Now we have Stan Marsh in the episode Whale Whores. In this episode, Stan joins the Whale Wars crew in saving the whales and dolphins after the Japanese keep killing them. When the crew does nothing to stop the whaling ships, Stan commits one act of piracy when he destroys one. With Stan and as the new captain, he destroys two more ships in the montage, and it's implied he destroyed a fourth when the Japanese Prime Minister sees Stan in the paper. Also, all these count as eco-terrorism. While eco-terrorism would be hard to apply a sentence for in this instance, we'll charge Stan as an adult and give him a life sentence for piracy. As since 1909, the penalty for piracy in the United States was life imprisonment. While it was a good cause, it was still illegal. Now we have Kenny McCormick. In the episode Poor and Stupid, Cartman becomes a NASCAR driver, and when his big day to ride on the track comes, Kenny goes out to stop him. He tries to bring a sniper rifle into the stadium, which was definitely obtained illegally, and also adds an attempted first-degree murder charge. If he got away with the murder, we would charge Kenny as an adult, but since he didn't, he'll be sentenced to 10 years in juvie. Now let's just hope his time there won't lead to another death. Butterscotch committing a crime? He's the definition of innocent. What did he possibly do? Well, let's look to the episode Butters' Bottom Bitch. After he pays Sally $5 to give him his first kiss, he later makes an entire company, recruiting more girls to fill in for Sally during times when she isn't available. The girls start to make the money for him, and he even hires full-on prostitutes. Since he is living off the girls' earnings, this is considered pimping. We'll only give Butters a slap on the wrist. This was done out of sheer naivety, but when his parents find out, he'll definitely be grounded. Next, we have Randy Marsh. In Banned in China, Randy gets arrested in China when his weed is discovered in his suitcase. Later, Randy teams up with Mickey Mouse to try and reason with the government when both their brands in the country are compromised. However, they don't budge because they're both associated with Winnie the Pooh. In order to show the government they understand, Randy lures Pooh into an alleyway and strangles him to death. 
for this single charge of first degree murder, Randy will be sentenced to death. In China, it's the highest penalty for murder. Typically, death sentences in China are carried out via lethal injection or shooting, so Randy will be going out either of those two ways. Mr. Herbert Garrison is easily the most interesting case. He's president and the pandemic special, and he refuses to do anything about COVID when it reaches America. His reasoning is that he'll use it to follow through on his promise to get rid of all the Mexicans. Not only is this attempted genocide, but also biological terrorism, as well as indirect mass murder. Towards the end of the special, the pangolin containing the cure is brought to South Park, and just when everyone thought the pandemic would be over, Garrison comes to not only burn the pangolin alive with a flamethrower, but the scientist holding it as well. So these are additional charges of first-degree murder and animal slaughter. Even though what he did was a clear violation of human rights, Garrison will only get life in prison as opposed to the death penalty. Because his crimes are so severe, he would go before the International Criminal Court at The Hague, and life is their maximum sentence. As we said, an interesting case. Next is Mr. Mackey, okay? At the beginning of the episode, Ike's Wee Wee, Mackey is teaching the kids about the dangers of drugs. During the lecture, he gives a sample of marijuana to the class for them to sniff. This counts as contributing to the delinquency of a minor. However, since this was for educational purposes, we will go easy on Mr. Mackey and give him a misdemeanor charge, which will sentence him to a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. Now we have Jimmy Valmer, and up the down steroid, Jimmy uses steroids to gain an upper hand in the Special Olympics, which we all know is illegal. Later in the episode, he beats both his girlfriend and his mother, which are two counts of assault. We decided to count it as first degree assault, aka assault with a deadly weapon, because Jimmy's crutches technically count as weapons in this instance. We think it's appropriate to sentence Jimmy to three months in juvie and some rehab and anger management classes. Next, we have Jimmy's best friend, Timmy Birch. However, they weren't always friends, as we saw in the episode Cripple Fight. There are a couple of instances of violence against Jimmy. Timmy first gives him Kenny's park as a gift, knowing that it could very well get him killed. Since everything from a safe to Jimbo and Ned to a whole plane almost kill him, this is a murder by proxy charge. Timmy and Jimmy later get into a fight, which is first degree assault. Like Cartman with his murder by proxy charge, we'll be treating Timmy's as first degree murder. In the end, Timmy will be sentenced to a year in juvie and some anger management. Now we have Wendy Testaberger. At the end of the episode, Breast Cancer Show Ever, Wendy satisfyingly beats up Cartman after he spends almost the entire episode mocking breast cancer. This is one count of assault and battery in the second degree, and we'll add another count of disturbing the peace, as everyone in the playground was minding their own business before the incident. At the end of the day, she'll be charged with six months in juvie and anger management. Next, we have Tweak Tweak and Craig Tucker together, because they committed the same crime together in the aptly named Tweak vs. Craig. The boy instigate a fight between the two, and they fight once in the playground and a second time in the hospital. They'll both be charged with two counts of second-degree assault, one for each fight. However, as the fight was instigated by the boys and not done on their own volition, we'll only be giving them a one-week school suspension. And finally, we'll end with PC Principal. In his first episode, Stunning and Brave, he commits a crime before even uttering a word, albeit petty. He takes a drink and throws a bottle on the ground, which is, of course, littering. He next violently beats up Cartman in the back bathroom for using microaggressions, which adds a second-degree assault and battery charge. Next, PC Principal's fraternity engages in plenty of hazing, such as branding pledges with hot metal and forcing fellow brothers to drink excessive amounts of alcohol. Hazing is illegal in many states, with Colorado being one of them. And with PC being the head of the fraternity, he's criminally responsible. Finally, to shame Kyle for insulting Caitlyn Jenner, he orders several of his brothers to break into his room while he's asleep, tie him to a tree, draw penises on his face, and shave his hair adding assault and burglary charges, albeit indirect. Finally, hate crime charges can also be added as pigs are put into his room, and they are considered non-kosher animals in the Jewish religion. For these charges, PC Principal will be getting 20 years in prison. All right, guys, that's it. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.